Isn't the table beautiful? As you look at those flowers, think of them representing each of you as part of this community. Flowers have always been a symbol of springtime and hope, and the flowers you see in our service today are a symbol of community. The flower ceremony that Reverend Linda talked about by the Unitarian minister was a way to symbolize the light and color of the many creeds, many cultures, people joining together in a community. And what is the meaning of community? Mr. Scott Peck, an American psychiatrist and author of the book, The Road Less Traveled, shares the true meaning of community. He states, community is a group of individuals who have learned how to communicate honestly with each other, whose relationships go deeper than their mask of composure, and who have developed some significant commitment to rejoice together, to mourn together, and to delight in each other, to make other conditions our own. He goes on to compare a community to a precious gem when he states a group becomes a community in somewhat the same way that a stone becomes a gem through a process of cutting and polishing. Once cut and polished, it is something beautiful. But to describe its beauty, the best we can do is to describe its facets. Community, like a gem, is multifaceted. Each facet, a mere aspect of the whole that defines the description. Each of you who are listening today or who will listen are part of the Unitarian Universalist community. For a moment, I invite all of you to think about our community. You are like these flowers, each with your own uniqueness and style. You can stand alone and are beautiful, but when we come together, you are still beautiful and each of your uniqueness shows through. This is the beauty of community. I experienced the uniqueness of this community the first Sunday that my partner Jerry and I attended. I still remember looking out of the sea of faces and seeing your smiles and wonderment in your eyes. As our time together turned from days into weeks, I began to see you as a sea of daffodils. When you look at a daffodil, there are a lot of things you notice. But I bet you almost never notice the little withered brown bit at the base of the flower. It's really important. When the daffodils come up, the ground is still pretty hard, and there is something sometimes cold and snow. So at first, the daffodils have a tough green skin protecting their blossoms. After it gets warmer, the daffodil doesn't need the protection, and it shrivels and it dies. And often in our lives, just as the daffodil, some part of us has to shrivel up and die so that some new part can grow and give beauty to the world. Oddly enough, though, the dead shriveled part of the daffodil doesn't fall away. There are two things we can learn from a daffodil to help ourselves and each other. We can be brave and wise enough when the right time comes to push out from under the tough skins of our souls that protect us from all that is hard and harsh, that can damage the more fragile parts of ourself. We can let some parts of ourselves die so that new parts of ourselves can live in beauty. We can hold on to the shriveled up dead bits, especially if doing so helps us to remember, to honor, and value all parts of ourselves, all parts of our experience. And just because we don't need that part or that way of being in the world now, doesn't mean that it has no value. It was very necessary to have that protection then and very good to remember and to appreciate it now. As a congregation, you taught me how important it is to honor and value the parts of your history and experiences that you have shared together. But like daffodils, you as a congregation have pushed out of the tough skins that were a shield and a protection to you. You have nurtured and shown your true colors and you are reaching out and learning how to be a community, how to connect and how to support each other without meeting together in a building. 
Each week I hear from members of this congregation who many of you have ministered to by way of phone call, email, or even a written note. These simple acts of kindness do not go unnoticed, and I thank you as your interim minister for the work that many of you are doing in caring for each other. This is the power and the strength of community in action. The other day I was online in a Zoom meeting with a group of interim ministers from other faiths, and we were sharing our stories about how doing ministry during a time of pandemic had changed. We talked about community and how we were discovering that our various communities were no longer being defined by a building. Our communities were being defined by the people in them. What is church? It is truly not just a building. A building is a nice thing, but it is not church. Today, we celebrate our individual uniqueness and at the same time celebrate how beautiful we are when we stand together in support, encouragement, and love. Think of the power and the beauty that can happen in a community. When I think of power, strength, sheer physical force, I think of an avalanche. Tons of thundering snow come falling down the side of a steep mountain with the speed and irresistible force of a locomotive or a freight train. In an instant, an avalanche can sweep everything in its path. But there's something even more powerful than an avalanche, and that's a flower. I'm thinking of the avalanche lily. Each spring, as the snow begins to melt in the high mountains, these tiny flowers push their slender green stalks upward through the softening ice, through the winter crust, and into the warming sun. The avalanche lily has white flowers with a yellow center, and it's not very big, they're tiny. The flowers are just an inch or two in size, but the bud inside a growing green stem that purses right through the cold overlay of February and March and brightens into the promise of April and a brand new season. You as a congregation have pierced through the fear of change and have brightened into a new dawn, a new promise. A new season is coming and you are ready to face the challenges that await you. Within the heart of a flower is a fountain of beauty. Within the heart of this community is a fire that warms and dances, and with each of you is that spark, that spirit of life. Now I ask each of you to take a moment. Visualize your favorite flower. Notice its center, a focal point from which everything radiates. Now ask yourself, where does your center lie? Flowers stretch upward towards the sky, towards the life-giving sun. Ask yourself, what lofty aim does your soul inspire? Flowers have roots hugging the earth. Ask yourself, where do you draw your own strength and nourishment as you go forth this day? And may you grow in beauty, in light, in cheer, and in joy. Then go out and continue to share your gifts as freely as the pleasant flowers that you see their blossoms today. May it be so. Blessed be.